up everyone before you start vibe coding your next project you're gonna want to check this out i've been using a ton of these tools like bolt and lovable and of course we're very tuned into the prompt engineering world over here and basically we've come up with a couple of examples and prompts that you can use to kind of get unstuck i would say for the most part and a couple other best practices so when using these tools we'll pop over here there's a couple ways to kind of get more out of them i say just by doing like a little bit of, of work up front yeah, these are small things like giving some more context via like better structures in your prompt, giving more details about your project. Constraints is kind of another example of, of details, building iteratively, using LLMs to help you. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I like really want to emphasize is like this idea of, of getting unstuck. Um, and so before we kind of jump into a bunch of prompt examples here, which we will look at, it's important to know that these LLMs are limited in, in some ways. And so if you've never written a line of code before, it can seem like, hey, I can get off and running really quickly, and then I eventually hit some point where, where I'm really stuck and something's, something's gone bad. So hopefully, we'll be able to give you some tools to kind of get you out of that. And so starting up front, we're going to look at a couple of prompts that we have here in Prompt Hub. So let me pop over here. If you go to the Discover and then look for under Groups, you know, the name of this group is Prompts for, for Lovable Bolt, yada, 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 yada. And we'll look at a couple examples of like kind of getting a new project started. And we'll have a bunch of links below for, for resources. Cool. So this is actually from a, a Reddit post, which will be linked below. But this is the kind of like a nice little, it takes a little bit of work. Sure. Putting together, hey, the platforms, the user roles, some of the features that you're thinking about, if you have some scale in mind, like having these things fleshed out, even just for yourself, I think is helpful. What I usually will do is I'll pop open ChatGPT and I'll have a window going over there, use a voice app, uh, voice to text, and kind of go back and forth to get a first kind of spec almost, which I think is like a pretty common practice. And so that's what I would say is a good starting point. Go to whatever your LLM is of choice, chat back and forth about whatever you're building, and then say tell it to build instructions for you know an engineer or another LLM developer. Um, so we have a bunch of other examples here. There's one for like a task manager. So but again, just thinking about that up front will give you, I think, more guidance into what you're actually trying to build. And of course, you can just one shot it and kind of YOLO it, and like that's fine too. But I think having a little bit of time up front, thinking a little bit about it, checking out some of these examples, talking with ChatGPT is like a good starting point. And so, do, do, do. another thing is kind of constraints. And so, we'll look at a couple of examples for that. So, let's say you want to, let's see, just have the model update the, the UI. So often you'll be building a project and it might be really, really large. It might be really, really small. But constraining the models, what the model's working on to a specific component can be very, very helpful. So for example, if we want to like just generally improve the UI, which is you know kind of broad, basically we're focusing on the UI. We don't want to touch the logic, don't want to touch state. Here's the visual enhancements we want. Make sure they don't break functionality, yada, yada. And so that's another really kind of key thing here is you want to, constrain the model to only focus on one thing at a time and you want to build iteratively. So focus on one small feature at a time, one change at a time. If there are related changes, it could be good to kind of batch those together. But in general, you kind of want to keep the, the changes the model is making as bite-sized as, as possible. And so yeah, building iteratively is kind of really important here. But the, like a meta point about all of this is that whenever you're writing prompts for anything, whether it's like an AI tool or not, there's what's in your head is what you actually tell the LLM. And often like what we've seen is, you know, the overlap is small. It's like, it's like that. And you obviously want like hundred percent coverage such that everything in your head, the LLM is, is aware of and maybe hundred percent. You want to get this close to that as possible. And so that's why spending a little time thinking through what's actually in your head and like fleshing out the idea could be really helpful. And that kind of goes for, like I said, for app builders or, or, Otherwise, the other use cases you're having LLP with. Do, do, do. Yeah, a lot of these are pulled from Lovable. They just pulled a new something kind of like help doc, which is really cool. So they have a whole prompt library with some some of these examples that we've ported over here. Look at that one. So here's another good example of when you're wanting to do mobile responsiveness. A lot of these um, builders don't really think about mobile, so we need to be responsive mobile first strategy, UI, UX, you know, a lot of these things use Tailwind, so use the Tailwind breakpoints. So that's again, sp specifying your technologies you want to use and frameworks and things along those lines. Don't touch the core design. So again, doing a couple of different things here that I think are, are really helpful. 
Yeah, this is helpful too to have the model kind of plan before. This depends on like what type of model you're using too. If you're using a reasoning model, maybe this is not as important. Bolt even just launched a new feature yesterday where you can do just chat without code changes, which I think is really helpful. And okay, so now we'll kind of get into the debugging part. So pretty classic, right? Like you get 90% of the way there, everything's going great. You're vibe coding like a beast and then you hit something and you try and change it and then it doesn't work. And then you try and change it and it doesn't work and you revert and you roll back and do all these things. So some of those best practices we said before will help you but building iteratively, making sure you're only on, like working on one thing at a time after you have that thing built, test it, test all the other functionality and kind of keep iterating in that way. But sometimes you can kind of hit a dead end. So here are a few options to kind of explore once you get to that point. Open up a bunch of these. I'll probably fake them real quick. So at a high level, meta prompting, kind of talked about this before, but help having an LM help you write the instruction can be helpful. Reverse meta prompting. So this is from Lovewell's library, which I think is really cool. So after you kind of do resolve an issue, having the AI summarize what went wrong, how it was fixed. And then you basically have essentially kind of like, you know, a prompt template, whatever you want to call it, that you can use in the future for facing similar problems. And we'll look at examples for a couple of these here. So iterative prompting, which we talked about, sometimes rephrase, rephrasing and simplifying. So cutting down the scope, rephrasings um, can, be, can be quite helpful. You can also use an LLM for this. But like for some specific prompt we'll look at for fragile updates, persistent errors, thinking about asking the model what it's already tried. It's going to help avoid making some of the same mistakes. Explaining the error in simple terms will help the model give kind of an understanding of where it's at and give you an understanding of, of where it's at as well and how you can kind of go further just so you're actually on the same page of understanding at least what the model think is wrong, things is happening. And then, yeah, rolling back and like reverting is kind of going to be your like your best friend here. If you hit it, if you keep hitting the same error, rolling back to a state where everything was working fine and kind of reassessing where you're at, trying out some of these other tips will be helpful. And then we have two more prompt examples. So we'll run through these debugging prompts real quick and we'll wrap up. So reverse meta prompting would be something like, please summarize the challenges that we faced when we were, you know, building X, iterating, blah, 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 and how those were resolved. Then create a prompt I can use in the future. So it's basically say, hey, we fixed this thing, summarize how we did it, and then create a prompt for that. So that can be really helpful. So if you're going to be touching that's like pretty something critical, maybe you have Stripe implemented or something along those lines, just giving the model like a heads up of, hey, like giving context, like, hey, this is critical. Let's like proceed with caution. Yeah, hey, let's do this, let's do that. Like, I use this kind of when I'm tinkering with like an OWASP integration, but I don't want to like break. So this can be helpful in that case. We already talked about the persistent errors. This is kind of cool, whether you're actually running to an issue or not, but having the LLM kind of audit the, the code base, obviously like depending on how large the code base is, this could be like hallucinations galore, but you know, generally put a lot of, you know, we're talking about vibe coding here. So we're putting a fair amount of trust in the, in the model. And this might be able to kind of give you some, some things to kind of look at. And again, I personally never used this. This was pulled from level, but having the model, like if your app is running, it's working, but it's like very slow. I'm doing like an optimization analysis. This, I imagine, would really only happen once it's like quite, quite large. And honestly, at that point, like the models have do have a tough time with like the really large context windows. So I don't know what an optimization analysis will, will do for you, but it's something you can keep in mind. And that's about it. So these are a bunch of tips all shared below. Feel free to use them. Hope it helps. Keep out, keep vibe coding. Love to see what you guys are going to build. And we'll talk soon.